we worship the Lord today. This is uh, the last Sunday of the month of January. And for this January, we have been memorizing Romans chapter 8. So every two months, we memorize one chapter in the whole Bible and whatever. And uh, it's not only that we listen to the Word of God. God wants us to memorize His Word so that it will always be in our hearts. And for the month of January, uh, this is the last uh, message in our theme, Bearing Fruit. Yes, for the month of uh, January, this new year, we want to bear fruit in our lives as Christians. And we want to be a testimony to the Lord always. And it's wonderful to study about different uh, aspects of the Bible. The Bible teaches on how to bear fruit. So here is the message, our concluding message to this month. And uh, we center our thoughts on the book of Colossians written by the Apostle Paul, and uh, uh, we will uh, be studying about Colossians chapter 1 and another uh, part of chapter 2. It's wonderful to be bearing fruit, so every new year we grow up higher and higher, and the highest uh, growth will be bearing fruit for the Lord. So going back to this uh, book of Colossians, you must have studied the book yourself, and it's one of the books that was written by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. It was uh, written from prison. Imagine Paul. He was in Rome in prison, but he was able to write, you know, letters to encourage his Christians. He himself wanted, needed encouragement while a prisoner, but uh, it was the, the other way around. He gave encouragement to the people of God who... Uh, uh, were in different uh, uh, countries in Asia and during and Europe during that time. So he was uh, in prison uh, somewhere during uh, 60 to 62 AD there in Rome. And uh, while in prison, he wrote other books also, which uh, maybe you have already studied, the book of Philippians, and that interesting letter about Philemon, uh, where... Paul was pleading for a servant Onesimus who was converted there in Rome and sending him back to uh, Philemon to be accepted as part of his family because he has become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So here in the book of uh, Colossians, Paul was writing to the Christians who were there. He said uh, to them that... Uh, you will be filled with knowledge of his will in spiritual wisdom and understanding and that you will walk worthy of the Lord uh, in all aspects of your Christian lives. So in the Colossians, Colossian church, there was one pastor there by the main name of Epaphras. And it's, it's interesting when you study it carefully and uh, you read what uh, the uh, scholars have uh, studied about Colossians. Paul has never been there. Imagine writing a letter to us where you have never been. You know, all the other letters of Paul, Corinthians, Romans, uh, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, he was there. He planted those churches. But here he was uh, writing a letter to the Colossians. He, he was not even there, except that uh, he was familiar with the Ifa Pras, the pastor, one of the young men he has trained to serve the Lord. And uh, also, it's very interesting to take note that uh, here in the book of Colossians, well, he, was, he wrote this. He was in prison, as I already told you, and that uh, he was talking here about many things about the Christian life that was needed by believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we also need today. So Paul has his own reasons for writing the letter, but for our purposes, for our theme for the month of January, we uh, are studying the, the book here in connection with bearing fruit. And so I entitled my message this morning, Fruit of Making Christ First. 
that's the most important football. We can, you know, do soul winning, conduct Bible classes, teach Sunday school, or teach the outreach set. But if we don't put Christ first, we have missed the point of uh, being Christians, or serving the Lord, or being uh, uh, believers of Lord Jesus Christ. So the fruit of making uh, Christ first. We'll just uh, briefly hear there are other doctrines that Paul was teaching in the whole book of Corinthians, but we will not take them up. So just briefly here, he was talking about the deity of Christ, the reconciliation and the universe with the Lord, redemption, election, forgiveness, nature of the church, heresies, and many others. But now we just concern ourselves with two things here in connection with uh, uh, making fruit fruit bearing fruit the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ so first of all is the fruit of knowing Christ himself that is the most important fruit of all second and last the secret you will share with everyone and this is the secret that the Lord wants us to know so here uh, let me, uh, me give you here uh, in verses 15 to 18 of chapter 1, the first thing is, according to what Paul wrote here, he is the visible image of the invisible God. Actually, in this uh, portion here, Paul was writing about a very, very deep thing. Because how can you see something invisible or somebody invisible? But now he has become visible. Yet when he showed himself visibly to us, it is just a reduction of really who he is. Because in his real essence as God, we can look at him and we cannot look at him straight. Because he is so deep and he is so uh, great and he is God absolute. When we look at him, for example, for me, I will look at him with my naked eye, I will die. Because I am only a human being. And so what did God do? He simplified God a little bit. He simplified him a little bit according to uh, what he wrote here. And especially in verse 18, which we have read. So this is it. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So that is the most important thing. Okay, we don't really understand him, but God simplified him so that at least we will know a little bit about him. And as we know a little bit about him, we see he is a great God. He is to be given all the glory in everything that he, we do. So, Jesus Christ is amazing. He is a human being, yes. A real human being, but he is uh, only the visible image of the invisible God. So when I look at Jesus Christ, actually I have not seen Jesus Christ. We have not seen either the picture that uh, we see in printed in books or, or magazines or in the television about Jesus Christ. It's not really the real picture of the real Christ. It's only the imagination of the artist who pa painted the face of Jesus Christ. I guess when we see Jesus Christ you know, face to face, he will be more handsome, more beautiful, more amazing than the actual picture there that was painted by uh, uh, Rembrandt. And so uh, he is the visible image of the invisible God through whom he created everything in heaven and earth. Now he can be seen, but we saw him through Jesus Christ. And in a very simple face, a simple man named Jesus, the Bible says he was actually the creator of the whole world. Now that's very hard to understand, creator. Because you see, I have made, you know, uh, things myself. Maybe you have made a chair. Maybe you have made a project way back when you were in school. Maybe you have uh, painted something. But what we have made can't be compared with what the Lord has made. Because when God made, 
He made everything from the beginning. There was nothing. And from nothing, he made something. And so many things he made in, until at last he came to me. He came to you. And though it was the greatest thing that the Lord has ever done, he created everything in heaven and on earth. And there are still many things we have not seen that God has already created through Jesus Christ. And so uh, I write here in my notes, God in all his fullness is in him. Imagine the very, very complicated God. You reduce it into one thing that is simple and put him on a man, Jesus Christ. That is already it. Yeah, but even as we look at it, it is beyond our understanding. We cannot fathom it. I cannot imagine it. But oh, is there any way we better uh, believe it? And so, let's read here. He is the head of church. So everything is simplified now. We forward to a few thousand years. And then here, the God of God, God the creator of the universe, went down to earth and then made something very, very important. And that is the church. Like Grace Baptist Church where you are now. Actually, Grace Baptist Church is only a very small portion of the big, big church that the Lord has been building since 1,000, 2,000 years ago. And, uh, and we are part of that now because we are here. It says here that the church is his body and he is the head. Now imagine, you make a drawing, maybe you're a painter, you make a drawing, you make a drawing of the head, be a small round there, and then below that you make a body, a bigger circle there. So a bigger circle down, and then a smaller circle up. The bigger circle down is the church, the body of Christ. The smaller circle there is the head. That is no one else than God himself. And uh, to simplify it, it's no one else than Jesus Christ, according to what the Lord is saying here. So, God, who is very complicated, I cannot even explain him, begin to explain him, but, but he created everything. He went to the world to simplify everything and make something very, very special. And he made the church of Jesus Christ and put his son as the head of the church. So just imagine the whole world. We couldn't even, I mean, we couldn't even count the stars in the whole universe. And suppose you go up in the higher part of heaven and then you look down at the Milky Way. You could not even see, you know, Earth in the Milky Way with all the billions of stars in the Milky Way. Have, uh, Earth is only very small. But you see, God, in his amazing love and attention, he chose you, you know, that, that small earth right there that would hardly be seen in heaven. It's earth. It is the most beautiful planet in the whole universe. Because there is no other planet like it. And the amazing thing is, in that planet he made man. And uh, you know, when he made man, he made me. You know, of all the handsome people in the world, Pastor Hero is the s smallest man. And he made me, you know, man. He could afford to do that. <laughs> and so, you see, that's what he did. And it's very, very wonderful. And uh, he made a church, and I'm part of it, you are part of it. And he is the head here, and then look at the body. And uh, when he did that, he is first of all who rise from the dead. So now, now from a very complicated introduction and the beginning of this message I just go to a very simple thing here that uh, God who is so wise and so great he made man and he what he made a man and he became a sinner and the only solution was for him to, to simplify himself to send him as a man on the world and give him salvation and die on the cross so that uh, he will die, rise from the dead, and then he can give salvation. So that is 
too simplistic it seems, but that is what it is. Written here by Paul in the book of Colossians. So you could just imagine how intelligent Paul was to, to be able to understand all this and simplify all this and then write that book of Colossians what, that we are studying now. So that uh, as we put everything together, we even go to a more simpler thing here. More simple thing here. I wrote in my title, The Fruit of Making Christ First. Of all the complicated things that Christ is supposed to be. God only centered on one simple thing. Making Christ first. That's it. And when we make Christ first, First, even if we didn't understand the universe, even if we didn't understand God, even if we don't understand uh, Jesus Christ and why he came to the world, why a great God became a man, yet he simplified it by telling us, okay, Christ is first. And that's the most important thing. He is first because he is my Savior. He is your Savior. He is first because he is the head of the church where we are right now. And so, let us see here. By him, God reconciled everything back to himself. So, basing from what I just said previously, when he became a sinner, everything was disconnected from God. Even the whole world. But when the Lord sent to die for our sins, and, you know, able to reconcile us to him and also to heal the world and the universe so that we can go back again to God and serve him and fulfill his will. And so to complete the, the thought here in chapter 1, the end of chapter 1, when the Lord did that, he made peace in all to all including us. You know, to to give a simple salvation to great sinners by a God who is beyond the universe. He can, what he can do is he has to make peace to everything. And then uh, he brought us back as friends. Verse 22. So we are not supposed to be his friend. We are not supposed. We are supposed to be enemies of him, but he made us friends. And so Paul Dunn wrote that Jesus said, "We are. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you." And so what did we do? We believe in the Lord as our Savior. We surrendered ourselves to Him, read His Word, and uh, study it. And so we have become friends with God. The most complicated God, he simplified it by these words here in Colossians chapter 1. And so, uh, he simplified us so that we can worship the, the very presence of God and we can be holy and blameless. And we can be versed who will stand in this truth firmly. So that we can, we will not drift away. So, in the rest of the chapter, one of the Paul was saying about, you know, people of God who will backslide and drift away. But oh, the love of God, but making us first friends of Jesus Christ. So that even if we display him, we can go back to him and serve him again. And, and uh, Going back to verse 27, you know, this is such a great process. It is beyond description. Something that the Lord has given me, and you, and that uh, uh, we have to understand this and uh, glorify the Lord as we, we do this. Now, uh, in this last part here of the chapter, I have written my outline, the secret you will share with everyone so Paul was saying here you know this story I'm telling you it's so fantastic it was a secret it could not be understood by ordinary people in the world but this secret I am making known to you now here 
in my uh, Bible, the uh, commentator here made an outline here, the sacrifice, sacrificial service for Christ. And this is an important secret that we can do today. So the first point I wrote here, uh, as we share everyone about him, that you will share his glory and the riches and glory of Christ. So, going back to 7, let me read. I have speak, skipped so many verses here, but we are just simplifying things here for our purposes here. Uh, to them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the, the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you see there Paul mentioning the word mystery. This is such a deep thing. It's a mystery that is very hard to imagine or understand. But here in this mystery, the Lord is simply saying, you will share the glory of God. I will share the glory of God. I can serve him together with you. You know the people of God, and it's a great privilege to be serving the Lord today, to be part of this church. And uh, as we... We share the Lord and His glory. We will experience His riches and the glory of Jesus Christ. So again, Paul is talking about a very, very great thing. It's very hard to understand. How could we talk about riches and how we talk about glory? You know, man is always looking for riches. So many people come to Cebu to gather riches to go to work and have salary and uh, advance in their profession so they will have riches and then they will become popular people and so they will have glory but oh the mystery of what Paul is writing in the book of Colossians is yes you don't have to Cebu, go to Cebu to have the riches and the glory the Lord has already revealed it here 2000 years ago in fact as Paul wrote Colossians there is riches and glory for people of God today. And if we just serve him and follow him, you can have all those glory. And all the glory, you know, starts with Jesus Christ. If you make him first. So, letter B here I wrote, Everywhere we go, we tell others about him with all wisdom. And we want to preserve, to present you as perfect in relation to Christ and so we work very hard for this so yes knowing Christ is the most important thing in the world that the Lord has given but there's a second continuation to that but by we who know Christ we now go and tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ as we do that uh, other people will know him also and so we'll know the secret that the Lord has started in the beginning to 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 give salvation to people he loved. So this become a Christian a secret that is open now for everyone to know. So going back to what we originally read in Colossians one eighteen, he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the, the preeminence. So, the most important thing that we need to do today as we serve him and so that we can bear fruit is to make him first. No, you cannot bear fruit for Christ without making him first. And so putting together all the things that we have studied for the month of January, this is the question here. Have you discovered this important goal of our lives to make, make Christ first and to put him first all the time? So what are you doing in your life today as we start the new year? Have you learned that the most important thing is to put Christ first? Whether you are in business or working, you, whether you are a family or single, whether you are a married man or single, or whether you're already mature in your 50s or 60s or beyond, 
or just 15 or 18, you will still have the same res responsibility the Lord wants you to do. Okay. Bear fruit by making Christ first in your life. And so putting together all our ambitions in life. We have many ambitions in life. We want to finish college, those students here, and then work in a company and then have plenty of money and then buy a lot and build a house, marry a beautiful girl or a handsome man, and then uh, you know raise up a family, have beautiful children. All these are wonderful things. But putting them all together, the most important goal in life is still this. And this Paul is writing about in Colossians. So you say, Pastor, sobra-sobra naman kataas ang mga ginapersent sa Bible sa atun. Too idealistic and too high. Yes. Because God wants us to be beyond ourselves and to do more and desire more. Because He wants us not only to focus our minds on the world and the earth and its uh, work and its business and its money and its property that you can have here. He wants us to go beyond that because if we put first we will go beyond earth and we will go to eternity. We go to heaven and whatever are the riches that God has reserved for you and me, He wants us to receive that. So, in other words, God wants us to be the most ambitious person in the whole world. He wants people who believe in Christ to make the most ambitious people the world has ever known. Well, to be have to have ambition, to be famous and to be rich and to have a big business, that's a big, big ambition. But, but but you know to follow Christ to know him. To obey him, to be a witness for him, to follow what he wants you to do is a greater ambition. Because that ambition will give riches that will go forever. And so, professional business people here in Mandawi, how do you look at life now? How, how do you look at yourself now? How high is your ambition and your desire? If you have not put your desires for eternity, your desire is too small. Too little. Now correct it. Go back to Colossians. You read it again. And uh, chapter 1. We will continue studying chapter 2 tonight. So, as I read in verse 80, He is before all things. And uh, uh, He is head of the body, the church, the beginning of the the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence so why make Christ preeminent? why make him first because if I make him first I will be the most ambitious person in the whole world and in the whole universe you will be the most ambitious people the world has ever known and you know God created you to be ambitious people but you know, when man became a sinner, the ambition became soul only until earth. But you know, when the Lord gave us salvation through Jesus Christ, He gave us ambition that is beyond what we could do. And that is the ambition for eternity, forever. And that is to know Christ, to make Him preeminence, preeminent so that we will also go beyond ourselves and be preeminent together with Christ. Not on earth. Not until uh, 2018, no. Not until 2020, no. Not until 2030, maybe, no. The Lord wants you to fulfill your dream and your ambition beyond that. He even wants you to fulfill your dreams forever. But you have to correct your worldly small ambitions you have to put in place the ambition that God wants you to have and that is the ambition of heaven of heavens forever and ever 
millions and billions of princes beyond your imagination. And so, going back to Colossians 1.18, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. So do you have that ambition already? Or your ambition is still too small? Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for your challenge. So though Colossians is such a deep book, but help us to read it again this week and see it again and how we can apply it ourselves, especially in making Christ first. So that we will also have first before him. In Jesus' name, amen.